I'm going to do something a little bit different with my video today. I have this little device here. It's a Raspberry Pi Zero. It has a little daughter board, an MMDVM daughter board that sits on top of it. And a little antenna. Acts as a little radio hotspot for ham radio. I noticed the other day that this device, which I've been running for a while, had started to get some SD card or disk errors and I was no, no longer able to update it. I'm going to take this opportunity to reformat the SD card and reinstall Pystar on it. So let's get started. All right, some of you may not be familiar with amateur or ham radio, and the device I use runs on the ham radio frequencies, the RF frequencies, and amateur ham radio is a hobbyist type um, function, and we, what we do is we do hobby stuff where we learn about electronics, radios, um, now a lot of computer stuff because we're integrating radios with computers. Um, but ham radio or amateur radio primarily, primarily exists to be able to help out in case of emergencies. So we can provide communications in events where uh, the cellular network goes down or the local telco network goes down or we have other issues. We can run on emergency power. Um, once a year we have what's called field day where we practice doing all of this. We set everything up basically in a field somewhere and we operate our radio equipment on backup power um, so we can communicate with each other. So it allows us to pass messages between locations if there's a problem uh, with a local network. Say if there's a hurricane, Puerto Rico was a big uh, example of that. Earthquakes are a big example of that. Where we don't have any terrestrial type communications, we can set up and do this. So it's a hobbyist thing that we do. If you want to learn more about that, um, a lot of YouTube videos on it. And you can read about it on Wikipedia or just anywhere on the internet. All right, so for this, this particular device that I'm talking about here, allows us to communicate on um, over the internet basically um, through a what's called a hotspot. So when I take a radio and I transmit um, on this radio to the hotspot frequency, it goes out over this hotspot to the to servers on the internet and then it gets retransmitted out to somebody else who's connected to the same servers. They hear me on their radio. So um, in addition to doing what we just talked about, emergency, we do this as a hobbyist. So I can talk all over the world on any, any of these radios, uh, DMR, Fusion, C4, FM, P25, using hotspots. In order for me to fix the problem I'm having with this hotspot, I need to download a new image. So I can go to the site called pystar.uk and I can go to the downloads section. And even though this is a Pi Zero, I found out that for some reason this doesn't work. I actually download the RPi Raspberry Pi version of the software. So I'm going to download this Pi version 4.1.2 and I'll save it on my desktop. And that'll take a few minutes to download. Once you download and unzip that file, you need to put it on the SD card. And I use a tool called Belena Etcher for that. Belena Etcher, Belena Etcher, something like that. It'll, this is a tool that allows me to flash images onto SD card. So I'm going to flash from file. You can also flash from your URL if you have a way to do that or you have a URL to go directly from. Flash from file. I'm going to select the file that I downloaded and I'm going to use that image from January 20th, 2019. Open that one. I'm going to select the target. Be careful here what you select. Um, if you have more than one external drive on your computer, you end up you may end up overriding the wrong one. So make sure this is the SD card. Select that, and then I'm gonna go ahead and flash. And that, of course, will take a few minutes to flash. Once that finished flashing, uh, it'll go back through and verify to make sure everything's valid on your card. And now we've finished flashing, so we're going through the validation process. This, again, will take about a minute to finish. All right, we're finishing up our validation, and now the flash is complete. It has ejected the flash drive already, so um, we have one more step. So that means I need to unplug the flash drive and plug it back in so that it will see it. All right, the flash drive is plugged back in. And what we're going to do is, um, since the Pi Star or, the, or the, the Pi Zero is Wi-Fi only, we need to go ahead and configure the Wi-Fi supplicant or WPA supplicant file. And there's a neat tool on this site for that. Go to Wi-Fi Builder, uh, choose your country. Uh, SSID and Wi-Fi PSK or password 
submit that and then you'll get a file which I will download to the desktop of, um, there. And now what we need to do is we need to go back into the um, file explorer and we're going to copy that file to the boot partition of, or the boot directory of the flash drive. So first to desktop, let me copy that file and we'll go to the boot directory on the uh, SD card and paste it. You should see a WPA supplicant. It's going to read that file when it boots up and then configure our Wi-Fi for us. All right, so that installs the image. Next thing is to go ahead and put it in the computer or into the uh, Pi Zero and fire that Pi Zero up, then we'll do our next step. All right, so when you first boot it up, it takes a couple of minutes to, uh, to hook up. And it says no mode defined. So it doesn't know what mode I'm in. You probably just need to configure. So I'm gonna do that. And it uses the default, um, I can spell R-A-S-P-P, default um, Pi Star. with a password of Raspberry for default. All right, so everything here uh, is defaulted. And this is where it doesn't know what to do with itself, the radio modem type. And so what we're gonna choose is a, an M, MMDVM. Um, I think it's just gonna be a straight up M, MDVM HS hat. So we'll click that one and we'll apply the changes. And if everything works out, we should actually see uh, the lights, the display come on the board. What it's doing is it's telling the software which uh, daughter board or which radio card you have plugged in. In that case, uh, would be this MMDVM card. And now it's rebooting. Now it knows what mode we're in. Um, one other thing we need to do, which I did not do, was choose the display type. And it's gonna be uh, OLED those changes and then what I'll see is I'll see the display light up on the Raspberry Pi. So now we uh, have the display running and we have the radio board running. Now there's a ton, just simply a ton of different options you can set in here and that's beyond the scope of what I can show today in today's video. But what I will do is the initial problem was that my SD card was uh, not able to read or write be written to anymore. And so I was able to actually uh, back up the configuration. So what I can do then is restore that configuration that I had backed up earlier. And that is going to be in this config file. And actually you want the zip file. So I'm gonna restore the config zip file here. Click on that button. And now it's what it's gonna do is it's gonna go through and restore all of my settings. So the important piece here is every once in a while on your, if you're running this kind of device, make sure that you are uh, backing it up and it looks like it's already uh, restored everything and my configuration restore is complete. Uh, if I go back to my dashboard now, um, you can see my frequencies have been set. You can see that I'm connecting to the YSF network, which is the C4FM network. So on this particular hotspot, I'm using a Yaesu FT70D, 70, 70, 70 Delta uh, as my fusion radio. These are pretty nice little inexpensive radios to use for this. And when I talk into this, this radio, it goes out through my hotspot as we talked about earlier and talks out to whatever reflector I have set up. And right now this is set up to the US SADRC room which happens to be our local, one of our local digital radio clubs here in San Antonio. So um, I'm not gonna get through uh, all into the configuration or anything this time, but I just wanna show you how I went through and um, took a bad SD card essentially. And by the way, I did scan the SD card to make sure it didn't have any problems, came back clean. So for whatever reason, it wasn't able to write to it anymore, probably just a bad corruption, corrupted area and re-imaging it fixed that. So I re-imaged with a new um, image of PyStar, and then I just went back through and I restored all my configuration and boom, up and running perfect. 
So if I were to transmit on that right now, I don't know if anyone's talking on it. So I don't know, you can't, yeah, you can see that. So if I, uh, first of all, I'm gonna get into Wires X mode. It's gonna, it's gonna try to connect to Wires X mode here. And now it's connected. You can also see that my uh, call sign and everything showed up on the dashboard when I transmitted that. Again, I'm still on the SADRC room. So you can see I can go to um, D star, DMR, P25, NXDN, um, and use any of those modes to talk to. If I had a radio, it's a P25 radio, I could talk to the, this hotspot with that. And then out on the internet, everything connects together real nice. Uh, again, this is uh, not a normal thing I do with uh, my home automation, but I am a ham radio amateur radio operator and I spend time playing with it. It's still fun. Uh, you may see more of this stuff from time to time on the channel if you do like that. Make sure you let me know in the comments that this was fun for you and you enjoyed it. And I'll make some more of these type of videos. If you have any questions, let me know. Make sure you hit that like button because it helps the channel grow. And then hit the bell icon so you know when I make new videos. And we will see you on the next one.